tomorrow we'll be presenting uh, an update on the NSAVP B42 trial. Uh, this is a 10-year update. Uh, this is a study um, evaluating the effect of extended aromatase inhibitor therapy with the letrozole for patients that have completed five years of endocrine therapy, primarily with an aromatase inhibitor in the first five years, although we also allowed patients to receive up to three years of tamoxifen and then to remain in the aromatase, with the aromatase inhibitor. Then at that point, if patients were disease-free, they were randomized to five years of letrozole versus five years of placebo. Again, evaluating the, extent, the, the um, extended adjuvant endocrine therapy. So we presented the results uh, here about three years ago uh, with a median follow-up of about six years. Uh, there was a seven-year data, which uh, showed a uh, not statistically significant, but a trend towards a significant benefit in disease-free survival uh, with a, uh, a about 15% reduction in uh, recurrence in favor of extended letrozole. Uh, but uh, technically, it did not meet statistical significance due to the uh, interim analysis where the p-value had to be 0 0.041 and it was 0 0.048. Um, at that time, we had also shown a significant reduction in the uh, distant recurrence and also a significant reduction in breast cancer recurrence overall. And uh, the um, uh, adverse events, particularly in terms of osteoporotic fractures or arterial thrombotic events, were not significantly different. So there wasn't much uh, in terms of those uh, events. So in this uh, meeting, we're presenting now the 10-year data with uh, almost a 9.3-year fo median follow-up. Who now, uh, which now shows a significant, a statistically significant improvement in favor of letrozole. No surprise. Um, the p-value is now 0.01. And uh, the uh, absolute benefit is about 4% in favor of letrozole versus placebo. The relative reduction is about 16% reduction. So the hazard ratio is like 0.84. Uh, similarly, we see a statistically significant improvement in terms of reduction in distant recurrence and in terms of reduction in breast cancer recurrence overall. And we don't see any more safety signals. Still no significant difference in osteoporotic uh, fractures or arterial thrombotic events. Uh, we were a little concerned initially with the arterial thrombotic events because in the first two and a half years uh, of follow-up, uh, letrozole had less than placebo, but then the curves flipped, so we thought that perhaps there could be an increase with letrozole over time, but certainly hasn't happened, so uh, it's the safety, I think, has been demonstrated. So what we take out of this uh, study, as we already presented before and published, is that uh, we need to have a careful assessment of risks versus benefits in order to recommend extended endocrine therapy for these patients. Um, we have to look at the absolute risk of recurrence, which is a factor sometimes of the age of the patient, the uh, uh, nodal status, uh, tumor size. Uh, also, we need to look at uh, bone mineral density because that's one of the potential adverse events from aromatase inhibitors. Um, and also how they tolerate the aromatase inhibitor in the first five years. And as far as uh, the future goes, we hope that maybe integrating genomic classifiers into this algorithm may help us actually select more appropriate candidates for extended letrozole therapy or extended aromatase inhibitor therapy in general. As you may know, there's been several other studies that have looked at this question, uh, and most of which show a trend towards benefit with extended letrozole therapy. Um, most of the studies show that at least eight years uh, of total therapy is beneficial. Maybe you don't necessarily need up to 10 years. Our study, of course, compared five to 10, so we said 10 is better. Uh, but maybe uh, close to eight years may be optimal uh, duration. Well, sometimes, uh, you know, there could be constitutional uh, side effects such as uh, heart flashes, menopausal symptoms, uh, you know, with uh, aromatase inhibitors, vaginal dryness, vaginal discharge, in which case we can uh, manage the symptoms in terms of, uh, you know, uh, as uh, lubricants, in terms of uh, um, uh, medications that counteract the effects of heart flashes. Uh, such as, for example, some of the antidepressant medications. Uh, also, another, of course, uh, major effect is osteoporosis, uh, which, of course, we monitor. 
uh, and luckily it, it doesn't come abruptly, it comes over time, so we can intervene with bisphosphonates if need to. Um, and uh, uh, as far as um, as far as the uh, obviously arterial thrombotic events is something that you cannot uh, anticipate, um, but uh, the other sort of issue with uh, with um, uh, aromatase inhibitors are arthralgias and myalgias. Uh, there's multiple ways of dealing with that, including sort of nosteroidal medications, including sometimes acupuncture. Some people have shown that you can uh, um, improve on that. Um, and also, of course, uh, uh, exercise, uh, because uh, most of this is essentially a morning stiffness type of thing. So if you get going, it improves. Uh, sometimes you have to interrupt therapy um, and hopefully restart if uh, you know the patient can be rechallenged. Um, there are different aromatase inhibitors, so sometimes you can uh, switch from one to another. And although there's usually cross reaction in those adverse events, sometimes you may find a patient that tolerates one versus another. So these are all methods that we use to alleviate adverse events. So uh, that's primarily, we think, because most of these patients, if they get a distant recurrence event or a recurrence, they go on uh, endocrine therapy for metastatic disease, they do well, and it takes many years before these patients succumb to the disease, and perhaps it's too early to actually even see that kind of uh, difference. Um, the other, of course, speculation is that the effect was modest in terms of disease-free survival and we may not have enough power to detect um, an overall survival benefit. So we still need to do further analysis, uh, potentially like up to 15 years or even longer, because as you know, the ear-positive disease is a disease that tends to re recur over time, and even up to 15 to 20 years later, you may still have recurrences. So, uh, we cannot exclude that something may, may become uh, significant later on, but certainly at this point we don't see it. Interestingly, when we looked at the seven-year data, the hazard ratio is actually favoring the placebo versus the letrozole. It was 1.15, was the other way. The hazard ratio now is 0.97, so in other words, it favors a little bit letrozole, obviously not significant, uh, but over time, the two lines come together and, and so it's possible that with additional follow-up, uh, because of the difference in distant recurrence, we may see some survival benefit emerging. Whether it will be significant or not remains to be seen.